Good afternoon everyone, we are the group 6 and we will be your presenter today. But before that, let me introduce myself first. I am Jana Nicole D. Gamayot and we are going to discuss the module 5 of my co-members. So in the module 5 lesson 1, it's about local and oral history. So what is local history? Local history is the study of history in geographically local content and it often concentrates on the local community. Local history is the study of history in geographically bounded area such as a region, a state, a country, a city, a town, a village, or a neighborhood. It incorporates cultural and social aspects of history. So, local history, it is comprises of all festivities or festivals. It is comprises of ancestral house, of all this house in the Philippines, also of some events happened during the past. So, ang local history, mao ni siya ang mga nangahitabo diri sa Pilipinas. Mga lailahe na festival, lailahe nga ancestral house, nga pinakadugay na nga balay sa Pilipinas, nga there's such an events nga nahitabo, like Mactan, Magellan Cross, balay ni Emilio Aguinaldo, o balay ni Sir Rizal sa Calamba. So, why we should study local history? So, we study local history for a number of reasons. First, studying local history provides us with increased interest in the larger na subject of history. We as students advance from memorizing names, dates, and places to the desire of knowing what was being said about people, places, or events. All history is local. Local histories help us to understand ancestors and context. Also, local history help us shape for being who we are. Oral history. It refers to the memories of living people about events or social conditions which they experience in their earlier lives tape and preserve as historical evidence. Oral history is the collection and study of historical information about individuals, families, important events or everyday life using audio tapes, video tapes, or transcriptions of planned interviews. So, oral history, it consists of spoken memories, stories, and songs, and the study of this as a way of communicating and discovering information about the past. So, ang um, oral history, maunis siya ang collection sa mga video recording or audio recording na nakapreserve for future generations. Pag may tag oral history, it's an interview from a particular person na mula sa iba't ibang pangyayari. Oral history, dili ni siya written kung dili oral, using video or audio tape. The history of the Muslim in the Philippines. The history of the Philippine Muslim is a part of the backbone of the historical development of the whole country. Filipino historians like Dr. Renato Constantino asserted that no Philippine history can be complete without a study of Muslim development. The Philippine has two lines of historical development. The first line, which is the older, came to develop in Mindanao and Sulu, and this refers to the Muslim line of historical development. Had not this line of historical development been disturbed by Western colonialism, Islam might have charted the entire destiny of the Philippine nationhood. External factors sweep into the country and broke the second line. The Hispanized Filipinos were central to the development of this second line, and this is the product of the great historical experiences of the Filipino people. Roots Mindanao and Sulu are the original homeland of the Philippine Muslims. Mindanao and Sulu has a total land area of 102,000 square kilometers. It is a fertile region and known to be rich in agricultural plantation, marine, and mineral resources. So, there were 102,000 square kilometers total land area of Mindanao and Sulu. As reported, more than half of the country's rainforests are found in Mindanao, while its agricultural crops include corn, root crops, vegetables, fruits, rice, and cassava, marine products like seaweed production, fish, as well as gas and oil are dominant in the Sulu Sea. Mainland Mindanao has substantial mineral deposits, such as in Zamboanga del Sur that has gold, silver, lead, and zinc deposits. 
Davao Oriental also has acromite reserves and marble deposits for Davao del Norte and oil deposit in South Cotabato. In these huge resources of the southern island have made Mindanao the land of promise because of it. The main concentration of the Philippine Muslim population is confined largely to the western side of Mindanao down to the Solo Archipelago. In mainland Mindanao, the Muslims are dominant only in Lanao and Maguindanao provinces, while the rest of the Muslim population are scattered in nearby provinces such as Zamboanga Peninsula, North Cotabato, Sultan Kudarat, South Cotabato, Davao Oriental, Davao del Sur, and Sarangani Island. In the Sulu Archipelago, the Muslim are all dominant in the three island provinces of Basilan, Sulu, and Tawi-Tawi. So this is Sharif Makdum. He is an Arabian missionary, and because of him, ang Islam ay nakilala sa Pilipinas noong ika-13 na siglo. Ipinagawa niya ang unang masjid or mosque sa Pilipinas sa tubig indangan pulo ng Simono, lalawigan ng Tawi-Tawi. In 1390, Raha Baginda from Sumatra arrived in Sulu and carried on Makdum's work in propagating Islam among the Tausog people. He introduced the first firearms and elephant in the Philippines. Makdum died sa pulo ng Siboto, lalawigan ng Tawi-Tawi, at ang kanyang puntod ay dinadayo pa rin ng mga turista hanggang ngayon. So, noong 1390, si Raha Baginda ay dumating sa bansa at ipinagpatuloy ang pagpapalaganap ng Islam na ay sinimula ni Makdum. So, this is Abu Bark. He arrived in Sulu from Johor and he married Princess Paramisoli. Abu Bark founded the first Sultanate of Sulu in 1450 and he died in 1480. So, si Abu Bark ay dumating sa Hulu noong 1450 and he married Princess Paramisole. Princess Paramisole ay anak siya ni Raha Baginda. Si Abu Bakr ang nagtatag sa tinatawag na Sultanate of Sulu na kung saan silang duha ni Princess Paramisole ang unang naging sultan at sultana. Sharif Kabungsuan, father of the Sultanate in Maguindanao, the first sultan of Maguindanao and the Philippines. Kabung Suan arrived in Maguindanao in 1475. He married Potre to Manena. So after matatag ang Islam sa Sulu, ang mga Muslim ay naglakbay patungong Mindanao sa pamumuno ni Sharif Kabung Suan. Siya ay lumapag sa Maguindanao, Cotabato sa taong 1475 at pagkatapos ay pinakasalan niya si Potre to Manena. Sila rin ang kauna-unahang sultan at sultana sa Maguindanao. Sampung dato na lumapag sa Panay, dato Sumakwil, dato Bangkaya, dato Dumalugdog, dato Paiburong, dato Paduhinog, dato Lubay, dato Dumangsil, dato Kalansyaw, dato Balinsula, and dato Puti. So after how many years, daghan na nga mga datong Muslim ang natudria sa Pilipinas. After nila nga madungog ang maayong nga balita sa daway nga pagtanggap diriya kang katong mga naunang Muslim. So magmula sa Borneo ay dumating ang sampung dato na lumapag sa Panay. Mauna sila dato Sumakwil, dato Bangkaya, dato Dumalugdog, dato Paiburong, dato Paduhinog, dato Lubay, dato Dumangsil, dato Kalansyaw, dato Balinsula, and dato Puti. When Philippines was discovered by Magellan, March 17, 1521. Nang lumapag si Magellan sa pulo ng Lumisawa noong ika-17 ng Marso 1521, Ang Pilipinas ay isa ng bansa ng mga Muslim sa kadahilan ng karamihan ng populasyon ay mga Muslim na. So pinatutunayan din ng kasaysayan na noong dumating si Ligaspi ang pumalit kay Magilan na napatay ni Lapu-Lapu ang kaharian ng Muslim ay naitatag na sa Batangas, Pampanga, Mindoro, Panay, Katangwanes, Cebu, Bohol, Samar, Manila, Malawan at hindi pa kasali ang mga solidong mga pulo ng Mindanao. Raha Suleiman, the brave Muslim ruler of the Kingdom of Manila, or Manila, who refused the offer of friendship by the Spaniards, which actually meant the loss of the freedom of his people. He fought the Spaniards under Miguel Lopez de Ligaspi twice in 1570 and 1571. So good day everyone, I am Jodi Lemonini, so today I'm going to discuss 
the next topic of our report which is the Muslim ethnic groups. So the Muslim ethnic groups in Mindanao and Sulu are linked in by both ideological and geographical factor factors. So when we say ideological factors it pertains to the the political, cultural or re religious belief of, of a certain region. And when we say geographical factors it pertains to the topographical features of that certain region. So the Muslim in the South are also culturally linked <coughs> to the Muslim <coughs> countries in South East Asia. So the Muslim in South it, are linked into the Southeast Asia because um, there are some traditions, cultures that are the same in the South and the same to the Southeast Asia. So most countries in Southeast Asia are the Indonesia, Malaysia, Brunei, and the Patani of Southern Thailand. So the Muslim ethnic groups in Mindanao are composed of 11 ethnic groups which are the Maranao, Magindanao, Iranun, Tausug, Yakan, Sama, Sangil, Kaagan, Kulibugan, Palawan, and Mulbug. So these 11 ethnic groups have their own language and have only few controls on political unit. So ethnic, when we say ethnic, it is an Italian term for a nation. It has, when we say ethnic, it has its own language, common set of traditions, and has its own territory from which its ethnic identity is derived. So we have the first ethnic group, which is Maranao. So Maranao, it literally means the people of the lake. So it is commonly defined as people of the lake, which refers to the lake of Lanao in the province of Lanao, so are hailed as one of the ancient lakes in the world. So the Maranao group are commonly uh, can be seen commonly in Lanao del Sur. So their language is similar to Maguindanao and Iran. They occupy the most strategic place in Mindanao. So the Maranao people, they have their traditional attire, which is the abaya. As you can see in the picture, the woman wears hijab or hijab with a long sleeve top and a floor length skirt. So that was the attire of the women marin woman marina. However, on the attire of the men, they only wear polos and pants together with a hat called taki. So they have also their malo. They they use it as the dress for a woman and a trouser for the men. So the next Muslim ethnic group is the Maguindanao. So originally Maguindanao is the name of the family or a dynasty which came to rule almost the whole island of Mindanao, particularly in Cotabato particularly the former Kutabato. So, before, the, the Baguindana refers to the family, to the name of the family or dynasty, which rule almost uh, the whole island of Mindanao, which is now, or which is part, particularly the former Kutabato. It later refers to the Muslim people who lived in the Pulangi Valley, which exposed the southwestern part of the Maguindanao. So as the time passed by, so today the Maguindanao, it refers to the Muslim people 
which lived in the Palangi Valley, which lies in the western part of Maguindanao. Uh, which lies in the part of Mindanao. So the Maguindanaoan, or the people refers to Maguindanao, are called people of the flood base. So the Maguindanao, it comes from the two term or two words, maningit, mangi, magingit, and danao, which means the people of the marshy or the people of the flood base. So the Kutabato had been the seat of the Maguindanao Sultanate, the ancestral land of Maguindanao, including the East the hill ethnic group the Tiburai, the Sadai, and Subanun. The colonialists had ever since been attracted to the fertile land of Cotabato. The Maguindanao are the hardest hit of the Filipino settlement. Their political power diminished after a long period of fighting and resisting colonialism and Christianism, particularly at the beginning of the 20th century. The Manila government created in the area the five provinces of Maguindanao, Cotabato, South Cotabato, Sultan Federat, and Sarangay. So the third Muslim ethnic group is the Iranun. So the language of Maranao and Maguindanao is strongly rooted in the Iranun tongue. So the language of the two previous um, previous ethnic group, which is the Maguindanao and Mag Maranao and Maguindanao, is strongly rooted, or it is from the Iranian tongue. Their culture received much influence from Maguindanao rather than the Maranao. The Iranian were excellent in maritime activity. So, so the culture of the Iranian people or the Iranian group was much influenced from the Maguindanao rather than the Maranao. So the Iranian people are excellent in maritime activity. So they used to ply a route connecting the Sulu Sea Mar Gulf to Sulubisi and raided the Spanish held territories along the way. So the Iranian people they are they are used to or they are used to go along with the same route connecting to the Sulusi, Muru Gulf, to Sulivisi and raided the Spanish held territories along their way. On plying the route connecting to Sulusi, Muru Gulf and Sulivisi. So, Muslim ethnic group in Mindanao is the Tausu. So, Professor Muhammad Nusra Matli argued that the term Tausu is a slang word and originated from two words, Tau meaning people and Maisu meaning brave. So, according to Professor Muhammad Nusra Matli, he argued that the term Tausu is a slang term which originated from the two words Tau and Maisu. So, Tau meaning people and maisud meaning brave so therefore tauso means brave people before the coming of the islam the tauso had already established a central government when islam came tauso leaders accepted islam they did not resist as soon as they became muslims they made themselves models by infusing and Islamic values and politics to the government. So next we have Yakan. So the term Yakan is a mispronunciation of the word Yakal by the Spaniards. So before the term Yakan was just the mispronunciation of the Spaniards fr from the word Yakal. So before Yakan was not really Yakan. Instead it is Yakal but the Spaniards mispronounced it and they, instead of Yakal, they pronounced it Yakan. So while the term Basilanas originated from two words, Basi meaning iron and Balani meaning magnate. So the term Basilan 
it is originated from the two term basi meaning iron and balani meaning magnet or magnate. In the ancient time, basilan was thickly covered by the yakal trees. Foreign people often mistook the name of the yakal trees as the native identity. During colonial period, the Spaniards branded the inhabitants of Basilan as Yakan and became, became carried up to the present. The culture of Yakans is similar to the Tosus. Its inner foundation lies in the spirit of Martabat. For the outer side, religious institutions like Masjid and Madrasa, artifacts and a vast number of Yakan professionals, Olima, politicians and fighters reinforced further the strength of the Yakan culture. So in the ancient time, Basilan was covered by the Yakal trees. So the foreign people often mistook the name of Yakal trees as the native native identity. So the foreign people they mistook the name Yakal trees as the native identity. So they 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 thought that they have thought that the term Yakal trees refers to the native identity of Basilan. So during the colonial period, the Spaniards branded inhabitants of Basilan as Yakan and became carried out to the present. So the cultures of Tausud, I mean the Yakan people, is similar to the Tausud. So the sixth Muslim ethnic group is the Sama. So the Sama identity is derived from the term Sama Sama, which means togetherness or a collective effort. So the word Sama it is derived from the word or from the term Sama Sama, from the Tagalog term Sama Sama, which it, which means togetherness or collective of efforts in English. So the Sama people are highly dispersed and scattered in the Sulu archipelago. So the Sama people, they are, they can be seen in the Sulu archipelago. Subclusters that make up the Sama pe people. So there are they, there are subclusters that make up mix up the Sama people. So first is the Bajaus. Second is the Sama Balimbing, Sama Simunul, or Sama Sibutu. The third is the Sama Bangini. The four, and the fourth is Hama Mapun. So, Bajaus are known as the Sea Gypses of Sulu Archipelago and Celebesis. The Bajau people call themselves Sama Laot. So, the first subcluster is the Bajau. So the Bajau people can be seen anywhere. They can be seen in in different cities in Mindanao like Indigos and Davao. So Bajaus they are known as the Sea Gypses of Southern Archipelago and Southern Sea and they call themselves as Samalaut. So the second one is the Sama Balimbing, Sama Simunul or Sama Sibutu. They are the Sama people who inhabited inhabited Tawi Tawi and are called by their place of residence. So Sama Balimbing, Sama Simunu or Sama Sibutu, they can be seen or they lived in in Tawi Tawi. So the third one is the Sama Bangini. They are also considered major group within the Sama ethnic group. Their dialect dialect is just a variation of Sama language. So the Sama Bangini, they are considered as a major group within the Sama ethnic group. And they have their dialect. They believe that their dialect was just a variation of Sama language. So the Fourth one is the Hama Mapun. The other, the other Sama subgroup 
which they call their dialect as Pulun Mapun, which is part of the Sama language. The term Mapun stands for West. So, the Hama Mapun, it is another subgroup of Sama, and they call their they call their dialects as Mulumapun, which is also the which is also part of the Sama language. And the term Mapun, it is stands for the West. So the next Muslim ethnic group is the Sangil. So the Sangil, it is came from the Sangihin, an archipelago sprawling the Salibu Sea just south of the Mindanao Sea. So the Sangil, it is came from the Sangihin, an archipelago which lies in the Salibu Sea. So Sangihin, it is an archipelago which lies in the Salibu Sea just south of the Mindanao Sea. Their migration to Sarangani province and to the coastal areas of Davao del Sur in South Cotabato was ahead of the coming of Islam to Southeast Asia. So the migration of the Sangil ethnic group is ahead or they are ahead. They come ahead in Sarangani province and to the coastal areas of Davao del Sur in South Cotabato before the coming of Islam to the Southeast Asia. So the migration of the Sangil comes first before the coming of Islam to the Southeast Asia. So the Sangil speak a language similar to Bahasa and in the Philippines to Tauso. So the language of the Sangyal is similar to Bahasa and Tauso. So the eighth Muslim ethnic group is the Kaagan. So the Kaagan inhabited mostly Dava, mostly in Dava areas. They became Muslims as a result of contact with Maguindanao Solanate and later strengthened with the arrival of some Tauso groups which helped to organize the Kaagan society. So the Kaagan people mostly lived in Davao areas. So they became Muslims as a result of their contact to the Maguindanao Solonate. And they became um, organized or strengthened with the arrival, arrival of some Tauso groups. So the next Muslim ethnic group is the Kulibugan. So the term Kulibugan is a Sama word which means half-breed. So the term Kulibugan, it is derived from the Sama word which means half-breed. Their neighbors, particularly the Sama Bengini and, Sam, and the Tausugs, call this Islamized Subanun as Kulibugan. So, um, the Kulibugan, it is the neighbor of the two groups, which is which are the Sama Bangini and the Tausu, which they are called Kulibu, Kulibugan when they become Islamized Subanun. So, the tenth um, Muslim ethnic group is the Panimusan. So, the early Muslim inhabitants in mainland Palawan were the Panimusan. These people became Muslims as a result of a close contact with the Sulu Sultanate. So, the Panimusan, it is the early Muslim inhabitants in the mainland Palawan. So, they are the first, they are the first Muslim inhabitants in Palawan. So these people become Muslims or the Panimusan became Muslims with the help of the close contact with the Sulu Sultanate. The Muslim concentration is mostly in the south southern part of Palawan such as Batarasa, Rizal, Quezon, Brooks Point, and Española. However, the isolated Muslim communities are also found in Nara, Ro Nara Rojas, Taytay, and Aborlan. So lastly, we have the Mulbug. 
The Mubuk are mainly confined in the Balabac Islands located in the, at the southern tip of Palawan. They received Islamic influence and later embraced Islam from Brunei Muslim missionaries. So, the Mubuk group of people, they are mainly confined in the Balabac Islands located in the southern tip of Palawan. So, they are or they can be seen in the Balabac Island, which is located in the southern tip of Palawan. So the, they received their Islamic influence with uh, from the Brunei Muslim missionaries. So the Mulbug people became Islam, or they received their Islamic influence from the Muslim, from the Brunei Muslim missionaries. At this period, the Brunei Sultanate was expanding the, its influence to the Philippines and Palawan is not far from Brunei. The Sulu Sultanate also helped to strengthen Islam among the Mulbu. So, the Brunei Muslim missionaries, they are the one who influenced the Mulbu to become Islam. Muslim Legacy The national identity of the Philippine Muslims was shaped by Islam and further developed in the course of their heroic struggle against Western colonialism. Right after the first encounter with foreign aggressors in 1570 in Manila, the Philippine Muslim won a distinct honor as Moro and identified put forward by the aggressor after the Moors of Spain. The Muslim in this country have been identified in the Southeast Asia and across the Muslim world as the Bangsa Moro people. The history of the Bangsa Moro people is no doubt ranked as the first line of historical development of the Philippines. The cohesiveness of the 11 Muslim groups under the spirit of Islamic Brotherhood is a living reality of Bangsa Moro nationalism. Good day to everyone. My name is Catherine Verbal. So my topic is all about the lesson 2, Museums and the Historical Shrine. So museums, the word museum is a Latin word which originally denotes a place or temple dedicated to the muses and therefore a building set apart for study in the arts is an institution that takes care and conserves a collection of artifacts and other objects of artistic, cultural, historical, or scientific importance. And these artifacts or objects are made available for public viewing through permanent or temporary exhibits. So the world oldest museum was built by a Babylonian princess by 2,500 years ago, discovered in 1,925 by archaeologist Leonard Pauli. So a museum in plural museums or rarely musea is a building or institution that cares for and displays a collection of artifacts and other objects of artistic. So this cultural, historical, or scientific importance. And they offer useful knowledge to Filipinos, seeking reliable sources of information and facts about the nation. The collections also showcase precious artworks and artifacts from various eras and give a peek into the lifestyle and culture of the country past. So Babylonians who lived 2,500 years ago were able to look back on millennia of previous human experience. It is said that Museum of Princess Inigaldi was so remarkable. So the museum, the National Museum of the Philippines or Pambansang Museum ng Pilipinas. <clears throat> Since 1998, the National has been the regulatory and enforcement agency of the national government in the restoring and safeguarding 
of important cultural properties, sites, and reservations throughout the Philippines. So we have the museum versus art gallery. So we have the museum purpose is to collect, preserve, research, and to protect artifacts and other objects as well as provide social services and education why art gallery purpose is to sell arts. So second, the first is universally public non-profit entities while the latter is a privately owned business. Third, the first maintains a permanent collection of artifacts and objects. The latter has no permanent collection or an endowment. Fourth, the first most has a universal focus unless specified by the museum's name itself. The latter has a specific artifact artistic focus example contemporary art then the fifth is the first is accredited through trustees at the board of directors as well as a director and staff the latter is not governed by rules of accreditations six the first is often partially funded by local state and federal crowd grants all well is solicited gifts and donations from private donors foundations and companies where the latter is funded by the sale of arts object seventh the first is in a special place often constructed or erected for the purpose while the latter is often located in commercial places so we have the museums in manila so first is we have the Bahai Chinoy or Intermuros. It's an age-old museum house within the premises of the Kaisa Angelo King Heritage Center building. Next is Casa Manila Intermuros. The Casa Manila or Manila House is a living museum that features the lifestyle of an, of an affluent Filipino family during the late Spanish colonial period. Third is the San Agustin Museum, the National Museum of the Philippines P. Borges Avenue. We have also the Malacanang Museum, San Miguel. <clears throat> then Metropolitan Museum of Manila, Rojas Boulevard. Then Museum of Contemporary Arts and Design, so in Malate. Then the Museum of De La Salle University, Top Avenue. Then UST Museum in San Palo, Museum Pambata, Ermita. And we have the other museums. We have Ayala Museum in Makati. Yuvichenko Museum in Makati. Lopez Memorial Museum in Pasig. Ateneo Art Gallery in Quezon City. And Jose B. Vargas and Philip Filipiniana Research Center in Quezon City. <clears throat> then Mind Museum in Taguig. Then Paulina Constantia Museum of Naive Art. And we have the Balear Museum in York. Then Provincial Capitol Museum of Nueva Ecija. Then we have the Fred's Art Gallery in Nueva Ecija. Then Benkab Museum in Beg. Then we have also the historical landmarks and UNESCO sites. So, Baroque churches or central inscription consisting of four Roman Catholic churches constructed between the 16th and the 18th centuries in the Spanish period. So first we have the San Agustin Church in Manila and San Agustin Church in Pauay, Ilocos Norte and Santo Tomas de Villeneuve Church in Mawag, Iloilo and Nuestra Señora de la Asuncion in Santa Maria, Ilocos Sur then second, number two, historic city of Vigan in Ilocos Sur so most intact example in Asia of plant Spanish colonial town established in the 16th century so number three, Rice Terrace, Banawi, Ifugao. So for 2,000 years, the high-rise field of Ifugao have followed the contours of mountain. 
Fort, the Tabun Cave Complex, and all of Lipun, Palawan. So it is located on the west coast of Palawan. So this point is called Lipun by the local people but marked Abion He. On charts made from British surveys, 18.51 about 1.04 hectares and is formed by a number of rounded limestone domes separated by deep chasm. Fifth is the Paleolithic Archaeological Site in Cagayan Valley. So located within the Cagayan Valley, basin that is bordered by the Sierra Mountain Range in the east. The Carabalio on the south, the Corredilla Central on the west, and the Babuyan Channel on the north. So this found the two municipalities of the province, namely Sulana and Pinablanca. <clears throat> Six Cabayan Mami Burial Caves in Banquet, Binguet. So individuals from the higher societal stratum of the Ibaloy of Cabayan used to mummify through a long ritual process over a long period of time. 7. Bitwan Archaeological Sites 8. We have the Baroque Church Extension. We have Church Complex of San Pedro Apostol in Lubok, Bohol. Then Church Complex of San Pedro Labrador in Laziz Sikihor. Then San Matias. And nine is Petroglyphs and Petrographs are of animate figures interpreted and representing juveniles or infants on a rook face in a rock shelter. Then the Neolithic Shell Maiden Sites, located along the banks of Cagayan River in the municipalities of Lalun and Getaran. So we have the natural sites. We have the Mount Hamigitan Range Wildlife in Sanctuary, Puerto Princesa, so in Palawan. We have the Tubataha Reef, Reefs Natural Park in Palawan and Batanis Protected Landscape and Seascapes in Batanis. Chocolate Hills Natural Monument Bohol. Then Mount Malindang Range Natural Park in Misamis Oriental. Then we have the Mount Pulag National Park sa Binguet and Ifugao and Nueva Ecija. Then we also have the Apo Reef in Natural Park in Mindora and El Nido Taytay Managed Resource Protected Area <coughs> in Palawan. We have Coron Island Natural Biotic Area in Palawan. Then Mount Iglet in Baco National Park. The Northern Sher Northern Sierra Madrid National Park and outlying areas inclusive of the buffer zone in Isabela. Then Mount Matalengahan protected by landscape. Then Mayon Volcano National Park in Albay. Then Turtle Island Wildlife Sanctuary in Tawi-Tawi. Then for the next lesson will be the next reporter. And thank you for the listening for my report. Cultural performance and indigenous practices. It's all about visual arts or sculpture. First, you have Manungo jar or boreal jar, dated to the late Neolithic period about 890 to 710 BC. Cultural treasure found in the early 1960s in Manungo Cave, Lipon Point, Palawan. On March 1964, by a team of voluntary workers from the United States, Peace Corps headed by Vector de Callan and Hans Kastin. Since the, the late Neolithic period, the jar became one of the important archaeological artifacts associated with a culture defected in Tabon Cave of Palawan. Dr. Robert Fox, together with his 
team of archaeologists was able to obtain the jar and place it at the National Museum of the Philippines for display and safekeeping in 1964. The Manungul jar was regarded as a work accomplished by an ingenious artist and master potter. It was also deemed as an artifact depicting the significance of water bodies such as seas, lakes, and rivers. As a means of transportation, trade, and communication during the time of the country's ancestors. The jar was also considered as a strong connection between the culture and archaeology of the past and the present. Second is Sculptures of Paint Laguna. Paint Laguna is known for its generation of skilled artisans and their wood carvings from life-size statues of saints to miniature sculptures and wall hangings. It was declared the carving capital of the Philippines in 2005. Next is Takao Paint Laguna. It is colorful, warm, and whimsical. The Takao Paint have become the epitome of Filipino folk art. They are like the Filipino fiesta painted on paper matching figures of dolls in Filipiniana roasters, carabaos, and fire engine red horses. Next is San Nicolas Cookie Mold Carvings. It is made using age-old techniques and ingredients like arrowroot flour or oraro, eggs, lard, dalayap, or, or lemon rind and coconut milk are used to impress the dough with a distinctive imprint are interesting kitchen artifacts themselves. They are open commissioned from Betis and Bacolor carvers, and although the designs vary, the mold always have the abstracted figure of the saints in the center surrounded by floral, vegetal, and corlico patterns. Next is male rice deity or bolol of Ipugao. A standing male figure representing a rice deity or bolol from the Ipugao people of northern Luzon Island in the Philippines. It is an outstanding and highly important expression of the foremost tradition of anthropomorphic sculpture in northern Philippines. Next is the ochre or motif design of Mindanao. It is an exclusive artistic cultural heritage of the Maranaos of Lanao, Philippines, and also the design or pattern of often rendered or carved in hardwood, brass, silver, and wall painting in curvilinear lines and Arabic geometric figures, and an art defecting the indigenous originality and skill of the Maranao. Next is the Sarimanok, a legendary bird of Maranao people. Sari means cloth or garment which is generally of assorted colors of manok, which makes a part of its name is a Philippine word for chicken. It is derived from, from a tooting bird of the Maranao people called Ituturo, and according to the Maranao people, the Ituturo is a medium to the spirit word via its unseen twin spirit bird called Inikadua. Next is Turugan of Maranao, a no ordinary home because it was symbol of high social status, and such residence was once a home to a sultan or dato in the Maranao community. Next is Hagabi of Ipugao, a bench that is only used among the ranch of Ipugao. It is usually carved out of a single tree trunk. It is a symbol of wealth and prestige. Next is Pabalat. It is a form of paper cutting originating in province of Bulacan. It involves making intricate paper cut designs from wrappers used in 
pastillas. Usually, papel di hapon or Japanese paper. Next is puni or borlas di astillas of Bulacan. Puni is a Tagalog term from the province of Bulacan which means to beautify or decorate with the use of coconut leaf. Coconut leaves are fashioned by folding, painting, braiding, and simple weaving which we have functional as well as aesthetic uses. Visual Arts or Architecture Ancient Filipino live in big settlement along sheltered bays, coastal areas, and mouth of rivers. Interior settlements were established at the headquarters and banks of rivers and their tributaries. The houses were usually constructed side by side along the river, banks, or seashores. This type of settlement could be found in Cebu, Leyte, Bohol, Panay, Cagayan, Manila, and others. Philippine architecture responds to the climate. Although there are many variations, generally the rough of the first Philippine houses, Nipa huts and Bahay Kubo, were high pitch and usually open gulf to allow for ventilation. The materials used in the Filipino house are found near the site. The major buildings materials are bamboo or kawayan, rattan or yanto. Various native woods, native palms like palma, braba, or anahaw. And nipa palms, cane, and hugun along grass for touching stone and clay are sometimes used as well. The early Filipino house was constructed without the use of nails or pegs, which were not able. The frame was tied together with rattan or other materials. The houses are usually constructed by the head of the family, the whole family or the family and their friends. Third is pottery. Traditional pot making in a certain areas of the Philippines would use clay found near the river. Holding the clay required to the use of wooden paddles and the clay had to be kept away from sunlight. Other pottery was used to hold remains of the decrease were decorated with anthropomorphic design. It is also used as well during the Neolithic period of the Philippines. Pottery was made for water vessels, plates, cups, and for many other uses. Fourth is waving. Involves many threads being measured, cut, and mounted on a wooden platform. The threads are dyed and webbed on a loom. And also, during pre-colonial era, native Filipinos webbed using fibers from abaca, cotton, and bark and cloth. Textiles, clothes, rugs, and hats were webbed. Baskets were also webbed and used as vessel of transport and storage and for hunting these baskets, were used to transport grains, store food, and catching fish. They also used waving to make just about all of the clothing that was worn. Wave rugs that they used for quilts and beading. The quality of the quilt or beading was based on how soft, how tied together, and the clean pattern. And lastly is paintings and drawings. Prehistoric cave drawings were discovered in a number of sites in the Philippines. A notable site is the Anguno Petroglyphs found in a shallow rock shelter. It is measured 63 meters wide, 8 meters deep, and a maximum height of 5 meters. Artistic painting were introduced to Filipino in the 
16th century when the Spaniards arrived. Lesson 3, Fiestas and Festival, Rites and Rituals So what is Fiesta? Fiesta is a celebration or a party. And festival, it is commonly known as a fiesta, is part of the Filipino culture. So, why do we celebrate festivals? So, usually, Jutsha Kaisa, Philippines. So, we celebrate festivals just to honor the local Roman Catholic patron saint to commemorate local history and culture to promote the community products or to celebrate a bountiful harvest. Then rites, it is a ceremony or event that leads to a new phase of life like high school graduation or a bat mitzvah. So mitzvah means a precept or commandment. Rites are rituals. Religions in particular have many rites which include celebrations and sacraments such as baptism or confession. So first is Sinulog. So it is celebrates the image of the Santo Nino or Holy Child that was originally brought by Ferdinand Magellan from Spain in the 16th century. So Sinulog in Cebu and Gina celebrate siya uh, in the third Sunday of January. So the word speed senior that you will constantly hear throughout the celebration, which is a plea to holy child. So kita majantana no is familiar aning uh, festival aning sinulog. So mona siya. So as you can see in the picture, so na babae nga na gunit sa santos na santo ninyo. The next is Mascara in Bacolod City. Celebrate. So gina celebrate ni siya on the third week of October. So Filipinos are known to be resilient people who are able to find ways to smile and just even amidst crisis and adversity. So this was the answer to the city's dwindling revenue from the sugar industry marked by dancers donning elaborate colorful, colorful mask parading 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 all over town back up by latin inspired drum drum beats and highlighted by a, by a beauty pageant concerts and sports events among its numerous activities third is dinagyang in ilo ilo city and in celebration on the fourth sunday of january so celebration in honor of senior santo nino and this award-winning fit in ilo ilo is marked by a street party celebrated with bountiful food and drinks concerts and a street dance competition where different districts and local schools participate it is also celebrates the tradition of Aklan Island indigenous Ita people next is Panagbenga in Baguio City so gina kuan siya celebrate sa bulan ng February and it is also called the season of blooming so as you can see in the picture so kuanjud siya mabulaklaki it is a grand event where gland floats adorned with flowers parade along the whole stretch of Sishan Road. A tribute to the city's flower industry, it was first held after the 1980 Luzon earthquake to uplift the spirits of those who were affected by the tragedy. So, pinta Pintados in Tacloban Leyte and June 29 is Shagina Celebrate. So this festival dedicated to Santo Nino, 
Street dancers are painted with designs that resemble armors to, to display the body painting traditions of ancient warriors while they parade all over town to the beat of marching bands. It then culminates with a grand dance presentation where people from all over the area participate in. Next is Moriunes in Marindoki. Ang ginaanan niya or particularly niya gina na ma celebrate in Holy Week. So, during the celebration, men and women who play the role of the Moriones are dressed in biblical Roman warrior costumes and intricately carved masks. They then reenact re to the seven day search for Saint Long Longinus, Longinus, a Roman cen centurion. Centur centurion who converted into Christianity. So during that reenactment, re they scare kids or conjure up surprises and tricks to draw attention. The most so this festival, the most exciting thing is that the audience gets to participate in the search for the person who plays Saint Longinus, who sometimes hides in townspeople's homes. The next is Pahias in Lukban's, Lukban Quezon and celebrate on May 15. So this festival dedicated to San Isidro Labrador, the patron saint of farmer. It is a harvest festival. Houses are glided with colorful Keep kiping or wa wa water made of rice and fresh produce that you can pick for free. So these decors are then judged by town officials and are given awards before the celebration culminates. Next is Kadayawan. So this festival is very um, familiar, manjud no, and ginakwanish and na kahit na may tabo na siya sa Davao City and gina-celebrate ni on the third week of August. So the word Madayao, which means beautiful in the Bawenyo, truly encapsulates the biggest and most colorful harvest festival in Mindanao. This fe uh, festival, it celebrates Davao region's abundance of fruit, flowers, and other fresh produce that are seen adorning the floats that parade around the main street, streets of the city. Its main events are ethnic dance competitions, beauty pageants, fireworks display, and a food event called Kansetan. Next is Ati Atihan in Kalib Aklan. So this festival is one of the oldest festivals in the country. Originally a pagan festival that is now celebrated as a tribute to Santo Nino and characterized by suit covered performers, dress in indigenous costumes, dancing tirelessly to the beat of the drums. Next is Bailes de Luces in Negros Occidental and it celebrates on January 5. This festival also called as Festival of Light and it started back in 1997 as a Thanksgiving feast for the upcoming year where a lively parade of dancers moving to the Latin beat, floats, and children are all decked with beautiful lights. You just cannot help but all stricken by this festival. And here are other festivals. Ibalong Festival in Legazpi City, Sandogo Festival in Tagbilaran, Bohol, Gigantes in Angona, Rizal, Black Nazarene in Capo, Manila, Kaamulan in Malaybay, Kidnon, Kalilangan in General Santos, Tuna in General Santos City again, and Tinalak in South Cotabato, Pinya Francia in Bicol Region, 
Caracol in Makati City, Lansones in Camigin, Pasungay in San Joaquin, Iloilo, Torumba in Paki, Laguna, Carabao in San Isidro, Nueva Ecija, Pulilan, Bulacan, Angona Rizal, Suman in Baler, Baler Aurora, Buyugan in Abuyo, Leyte, Bangus in Dagupan City, Kinabayo in Dapitan City, Parada ng Lechon in Balayan, Batangas, Kasilunawan or Sayal sa Ubando in Ubando, Bulacan, Kutud Crucifixions in San Fernando, Pampanga, Ligligan Parol in San Fernando, Pampanga, Taong Putik in Barangay Bibik Bibiklat, Aliaga, Nueva Ecija. So, this is the picture of Ibalong Festival. Sandugo, Gigantes, and Black Nazarene. Kaamulan, Kalilangan, Tuna, Tinalak, Pinya Francia, Caracol, Lansones, Pasungay, Turumba, Carabao, Sumang, Buyugan, Bangus, Kinabayo, Paradang Lechon, Kasilunawan, Sayaw sa Ubando, Kutod Crucifixions, Ligligan Parol, and Taong Putik.